Whenever I come to this great city of Jerusalem, I feel a renewed reverence for him who made this land holy. Under the direction of the Father, Jesus the Christ was creator of this and other worlds. He was Jehovah, God of the Old Testament. Jesus was the promised Emmanuel, as prophesied by Isaiah. More than 2,000 years ago, the Lord Jesus Christ was born in nearby Bethlehem. As the only begotten Son of Almighty God, Jesus was the only perfect man to walk the earth. In New Testament days, Jesus established his church, built on the foundation of apostles and prophets. He healed the sick and caused the lame to walk, the blind to see and the deaf to hear. He raised the dead, yet he allowed his life to be taken to make resurrection a reality and eternal life a possibility for all humankind. It was here in Jerusalem that the Savior spent his final days in mortality. I am standing on the Mount of Olives. Here at the base of the Mount, Jesus came to the Garden of Gethsemane. He came to submit to the will of his Father and offer himself as the sacrifice for the sins and weaknesses, the pains and burdens of all who would ever live. In that garden, olives had been pressed under great weight to squeeze precious oil from the olives. In like manner, Jesus was literally pressed under the weight of the sins of the world. There, he sweat great drops of blood, his life's oil, which issued from every pore. Not far from here is a hill named Golgotha, meaning skull, which symbolized death. There upon the cross, the Savior of the world was lifted up. He gave his life as part of his atoning sacrifice. His subsequent resurrection, his triumphant victory over the grave is recorded in Holy Writ. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Because the Savior offered himself as the infinite atonement, you and I have the opportunity, the privilege, to be forgiven when we repent. We can also turn to him for healing of our hearts, for strength where we are weak, and for help to do things we simply cannot do on our own. By virtue of his transcendent offering, Jesus also gave us the gift of immortality and the opportunity for eternal life, proclaiming, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Another testament of Jesus Christ comes from ancient America, where God the Father introduced his son to the Nephites, declaring, Behold my beloved son, hear ye him. Modern prophets have also borne witness of him, including this declaration by the prophet Joseph Smith. And now, after the many testimonies which have been given of him, this is the testimony, last of all, which we give of him, that he lives. I also declare that Jesus the Christ lives, that his church has been restored to the earth, complete with his power and authority, with apostles and prophets, and essential ordinances and covenants, in the coming day, the Lord will return to this holy land. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Then he will offer these words. I was wounded in the house of my friends. I am he who was lifted up. I am Jesus that was crucified. I am the son of God. And then every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is the Christ. 
I testify that he is the living Christ, our Lord and Savior, exemplar, redeemer, and judge. In the sacred name of Jesus Christ, amen.